speaking up and active, people active in their communities, that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with Rochester, Rochester Indie Media. You're watching Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV. I'm Dawn Zupelli, the Barefoot host, and today's show would not be happening without Susan Galloway, who's producing today's show and directing, and Andy Dillon and Ted Forsyth are on cameras today. Thank you, Indie Media. And uh, we also have an Indie Media person in the uh, studio here today who's going to be talking about the topic that we're talking about, anarchism. It's a 101 ABC's basic intro to anarchism, which is important that we kind of cover the ground rules, I think, today. With with the growing number of anarchism um, anarchists in the community, specifically in the Rochester community and nationally too, and the criminalization that's happening. And we have David White, a professor at St. John Fisher, who terms himself a career anarchist. So we have a spectrum here of um, direct action anarchists, career anarchists. We're going to figure out what this means and what anarchy and anarchism is. So who wants to start with some terms? How about David? Because you have that professor, you know, let's get the terms here. Anarchy and anarchism. What is this? Well, anarchism uh, is the disavowal of government, uh, either God, uh, deny the existence of a God governing uh, things, and deny the existence of an authority behind the scenes, human authority, uh, directing matters. Now, uh, in some cases, you can't deny the reality because we have the acts of God, the hurricanes and all of that, and we have soldiers and police uh, representing the government. But in those cases, we deny any legitimacy, any authority, any inherent right uh, to those. So, I mean, sometimes you do get blown away by the hurricane and you do get beat up by the bully, uh, but you, as an anarchist, do not acknowledge any justification for uh, that. Instead, you believe in a cooperative human community and the theory of mutuality, uh, where people in small groups voluntarily uh, band together to uh, support themselves and be self-reliant, uh, and sometimes, when technically necessary, form into guilds. Uh, which deal with the water supply and the airlines and all of those sorts of things. Why does it have, why is anarchy um, perceived as just chaos and utter um, madness? Well, good question, because um, uh, the bully, out of fear, uh, hates the anarchist and uh, wants to portray the anarchist as depriving people of the safety that the government or the religion is going to provide for them. Mm -hmm. So, um, Ben, how do, what are the moments like in your life? So you both declare yourself anarchists. Um, how do you make the, when, at what moment in your life do you make this declaration or this realization and how did it come about for each of you? Uh, it's sort of a hard question for me. Um, maybe it's right now, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess ever since I got involved in you know, political action and uh, change, you know, working for social change, um, I've been, it's been an anarchist-based uh, setting. So my first ones were uh, sort of the global justice movement, which is very much anarchist-led. Uh, a lot of people around me considered themselves anarchists. When I first heard the term, I had, you know, no idea what it meant. I didn't know if I wanted to associate myself with that, but they were doing work that I thought was good, so, you know, I stayed around them. Um, and then over time, I, I got to understand the philosophy more, I realized it, you know, was, was uh, uh, consistent with what I believed. And I, I, at some point, I think I started calling myself an anarchist. And then maybe at other points, I stopped calling myself anarchist because just seeing the way that particular people, um, you know, what it meant to them that, that didn't really jive with what I was doing. Um, 
so stopping call, calling myself anarchist. And then I think lately I've been calling myself anarchist again, uh, just because uh, uh, interpreting for my own self and, and seeing what it means. So, and what so are the principles that you believe in of um, anarchism? Uh, so to me, the, the principles that I like are, are um, sort of, um, uh, it's, it's about making the individual better. So, so not looking to other people to solve your problems or the government or God or, or whatever, higher authorities to solve your problems or looking for ways for you to solve them yourself and you know, with people around you. Um, so it's about really uh, developing the self and, and making yourself self-reliant. So I, I like that idea, the idea of um, you know, directly solving your problems rather than asking government to solve them or, or looking for that. It's a, it's a very empowering thing and I, it's, that's what I like about it most, I think. And David, you have a little bit longer experience with anarchism, I think. So how did it come about for you? Well, I grew up in a very affluent uh, suburb of New York City. Uh, I hated that place. Uh, I greatly resented being told what to do. And then as a teenager, I encountered uh, Henry David Thoreau uh, and his um, affirmation of self-reliance and living your own life and uh, moral resistance to authority. Uh, especially his essay on civil disobedience. Uh, that was, of course, the uh, time of the uh, civil rights movement, uh, which Martin Luther King and um, before him Gandhi had been very influenced by Thoreau. Uh, so this came together as a philosophy for me. And then in the time of the uh, Vietnam uh, War, there was a great mix of protest uh, groups, and I tended to fall in with the Black Banner uh, type of uh, people, although I didn't uh, affiliate with them in any. Uh, and what's up with the black? Why is there so much black? It's yeah, people I don't think, know. oh, it's negative. I mean, <laughs> I personally love yeah. black, but I'm just yeah. saying, what is Well, the you actually, you can wear whatever color okay. uh, you want. You you know. as, as I say, Gandhi had no shirt at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> and he's an anarchist. <laughs> um, so, oh, geez, where do we want to go from here? I mean, it sounds like the way you're describing it that it would be inherent to human nature to want to be an anarchist because nobody wants to be told right. what to do and nobody right. wants people lording over them with um, machinery yeah. or governments or but yet people foul rank and file so often to the state and to and to these Ab gods. Absolutely. So why does There's this happen? A, there is a natural tendency within human race toward anarchy, which is to say organizing in mutual aid uh, groups. Uh, and once you develop a technology that you're personally interested in and that is useful to the larger community, that anarchistic bond becomes extremely strong and you just naturally uh, work together and help each other because you can see the beneficial uh, outcome. When things go wrong, then you've opened the opportunity for a sicko to come along and say, I'm gonna tell you how to do things, I'm going to boss you around, uh, these people are nothing but bullies, but if you do have a natural disaster or you have a depression or whatever, people become afraid, uh, things do go wrong, and out of fear, uh, they submit to the church or uh, the state or the police force. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about it, mutual aid, how it looks in practice, what anarchism looks like, and you're watching Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV. <laughs> Today, many of the battles that we fight are in the courtroom for our sacred right of sovereignty, so red nation rise, Native American rights fund, I can make a change in the names of my ancestors so they didn't die in vain, but together, calling the tribes to action, one nation, can you imagine? Grandma once said our people will thrive, 500 years and we still survive, NARF, the Indian wars never ended, the only change venue to be continued. American Rights Fund. Visit narv.org. Okay, kids, here we are at the slavery exhibit. Now, as you can see, the slaves were kidnapped from their homes, chained together for weeks. They would cram them onto these ships in very appalling conditions. Thousands of women and children are being smuggled across the border. Sexual trafficking of children. 
see right here, they were treated like animals. They worked all day long for no pay. In sweatshops raided by police, children forced into slave labor. Some of the slave masters were very cruel. They whipped them and they beat them, as you can see in some of these pictures. Torture and assault well, can be brutal, even fatal. So, before moving on, are there any questions? Um, does this still happen today? We're talking about anarchism, and here to do that is David White and Ben Dean Kawamura. I don't think I said your names earlier. I apologize for that. And uh, we're setting up some terminology, and let's just start with uh, these terms like mutual aid. It sounds like a nice thing, mutual aid. What does that mean? David? Well, in the classes that I run, uh, instead of the students doing their own work and receiving their own grade for what they've achieved and to hell with the rest of them, uh, they are uh, enjoined, required, to be responsible for everything that goes on in the room and for everyone's uh, learning. And it's interesting to me that although it shocks people to be told that at the beginning of a course, it very quickly resonates with principles that they've learned through church or through education uh, courses. And Ben, how do you see that principle playing out in like local groups or organizations now, or what anarchist groups do we have here in Rochester, would you say, and how that plays out? Sure. I mean, I think mutual aid is sort of a, a term that's pretty intuitive to people, but I, I think one thing that maybe distinguishes it is in terms of groups helping each other out, looking at from the term of, of really trying to help each other rather than some sort of a tit-for-tat thing, I'm going to help you because you're going to help me, you know, I'm going to get you elected because you're going to you're going to give me a favor later on. So it's really about um, solidarity between groups and, and people helping, helping each other out because just human nature to, to help other people out and to, to be supportive of different groups. Um, different groups that are around in Rochester uh, that I see as anarchist based, they might not all necessarily call themselves anarchists, but I think they're very influenced by anarchism and also a lot of the people in them will identify as anarchists. Um, uh, well, Critical Mass is an interesting one. It's a, a monthly bike ride. Um, Basically, uh, just a direct bike ride. People people go on the streets, enjoy biking, but maybe have a hard time with the cars all the time. Don't like being hit, or just generally being a second class citizen on the road. So they organize together to go out and and bike. There's there's no leader, there's no route. Just you know, whoever's in front at that time is will will choose a direction and it will trade off. So so that's a kind of a, a fun example of one. Uh, other examples are, um, well, the example that I cited was the Global Justice Movement, which is was around in the late 90s when I, when I got into activism. Um, sort of a worldwide movement to um, uh, fight against so-called free trade agreements and fight for more just fair trade agreements that took into account environmental and labor and uh, de democracy in terms of labor laws. <clears throat> and uh, that organized nationally and also internationally um, and had some real huge successes uh, around the globe. Um, in the US, probably the biggest one is Seattle in 1999. Um, people organized together to uh, disrupt the World, Trade, the World Trade Organization meeting in Seattle, and we're, succeed, we're successful in doing that. Um, and they organized around the spokes council model, so basically um, a lot of people gathering together in small affinity groups of between you know, five or 10 or 20 people, and then organizing together into a spokes council, which is sort of a, uh, a group of affinity groups, agreeing together what the plan was and, and implementing that, and they really were successful. And oh, can I just say one more, yeah, which is ahead. my favorite right now, is uh, I think in the media is a great example of uh, you know, anarchism. Um, and I think it was founded directly on anarchist principles. Um, basically, the idea of, of people who had an issue with media, didn't think the media was representing them correctly. And um, instead of sort of writing letters to the editor or complaining or trying to get jobs and change the system, decided to start their own media. And it, it's flourishing. It's, it's in hundreds of, hundreds of cities across the world. Um, you know, and it's at this show, which is awesome. So is it uh, utopia? Is it just um, 
uh, do-it-yourself, anti-authoritarian, can happen in very small, um, perfect little <clears throat> collectives, but how can this be uh, successful in larger numbers, on larger scales, and people who say, well, what about leadership? What about government? People won't stop at stoplights. How do you address that, David? Well, there's one uh, group that I think is more important than just about all the others, and it's called the Johnson family. Uh, it's most prominently portrayed in the late writings of uh, William S. Burroughs. And the Johnson family is a code of conduct. It's very widespread. The code of conduct is very simple. You mind your own business, your word is good, and you help others. Uh, and Johnsons are found uh, throughout the world. Uh, there's, no, there's no way to join except to go out and be uh, a Johnson. So that kind of implies just a a faith in human nature, that people are inherently good and care about others and respect others. They don't need these rules and laws as many uh, somehow and people will take care of each other. Is that accurate? Well, that's true and a good scientific reason for believing in that is evolution. That uh, what we learn is a very superficial layer, what we explicitly learn from our own experience, it's a very superficial layer compared to millions of years of nervous system uh, evolving. And it evolves toward cooperation. Obviously, the uh, uh, human child needs a decade at least to have any physical chance of survival uh, alone. So there's a tremendous amount of cooperation, whether you're in a good family or a bad family, a tremendous amount of social cooperation just to bring a child to age 10. So what, what does a utopian anarchist society look like in both of your visions? <laughs> I guess I'll start with Ben. How, how could this work? Well, I, I think it's hard to envision the utopian anarchist society because it, it's so much different than how we're living right now. You know, think about a, a society without police, society without uh, armies, without government. It's, to, to, from, my, from my point of view, it's, it's very difficult and pretty much impossible. I mean, I could think of different scenarios and you know it's a nice picture in my mind but I think it, when we actually reach that it's, it's going to be much different than any any way I think of it so I mean I think it's much more of a uh, a matter of looking at society right now and seeing how we could get it closer to that idea how we could take it in steps towards uh, individuals having more power over their own self and their own surroundings less domination from one person to the other so I, I, I sometimes I daydream about the utopian anarchist society but I try not to you know make that sort of how I, how I go about my work in terms of how I, how I um, organize myself right now. And David, then we'll go to break. The utopia that I would stress is the realizable utopia. It, it is, depends on how old you are and what kind of job or position you have. But I ask people, you know, look at the resources you have, look at the power and authority that you have. You can use those on behalf of an anarchistic utopia or you can do what they uh, want you to do. And all the groups that I, that I run uh, on campus and off campus, uh, I say, you know, we can do whatever we want. This is our group. And the only thing that I ask is that, we, that you not do something that's going to get us shut down by the authorities. You know, if you want to get drunk, you go off and do that on your own time. You want to use drugs, you do that on your own time. Anarchists can get drunk and do drugs, but that's not a principle. Well, right? they can, but we don't, we don't want you to do it here right. <laughs> because it's going to bring down the authorities on us. We're going to talk more about it when we get back. We're talking about anarchism on the Rochester Indie Media Indie TV show. <laughs> Don't tell me to chill out when you're, you're stealing my things. I, I wouldn't have to raise friend. my voice if you would just give it back and stop being like a criminal. I don't have your cell phone. Oh, God, I don't have look your cell at yourself. Phone. What are you offering Is this a thief's uniform? Oh, my God. You see all these people standing around here? Oh, Why am oh, I the one? I, I'm Why are you sorry, homie. Right okay? Oh. What? Don't make this a big deal. Just give it back, okay? Did you see me? Did yeah, you see and me? you know, I just know you took it. Where are your witnesses? Look at Where are your witnesses? Did you see me? Did you see me? left this in the bathroom. A deserted warehouse on the outskirts of town. And a ticking bomb spells trouble for Batman and Robin. Who 
truly breaking and entering. It's Batgirl. Quick, Batgirl. Untie us before it's too late. It's already too late. I've worked for you a long time, and I'm paid less than Robin. Holy discontent. Same job, same employer means equal pay for men and women. No time for jokes, Batgirl. It's no joke. It's the federal equal pay law. Holy act of Congress. Can we talk about this later? Will Batgirl save the dynamic duo? Will she get equal pay? Tune in tomorrow or contact the Wage and Hour Division listed in your phone book under the U.S. Department of Labor. Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV, and here we're with David White and Ben Dean Kawamura talking about anarchism. So, are there bad types of anarchism? I mean, like, there's different tendencies within the anarchist uh, realms of individualistic anarchism or collective anarchism. Is there a spectrum? Are there differences where how it plays out? And uh, what what does it look like? <laughs> I think, well, in terms of bad types of anarchism, I think there's a lot of people who may call themselves anarchists who, who don't, in my opinion, really follow the fundamental principles. So, you know, you can look at different um, philosophies, anarcho-capitalism, which is trying to mix capitalism and anarchism, which I don't think actually works at all. And then also on an individual level, yeah, I think there's a lot of um, people who take an anarchism as sort of, I could do whatever I want, you know, just I'm just going to be an, uh, a mean person. I don't know what I could say on indie TV. Uh, Public access, babe, go. <laughs> I could just be an asshole. asshole and there you go, cares. say it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, stuff like that. And I, I think that's definitely um, uh, a factor in terms of groups. And uh, I think it's uh, a matter of basically just educating those people that that, that stuff isn't tolerated. And, and um, if we're going to, you know, be together as a society, that, that's just not going to work. So in terms of sexism, racism, and stuff like that in groups, um, I mean, first of all, it's just not, it's not what I want to be around as a, as a man. I don't want to be around sexism, but it's, it's, and it's not right to have it. But also, if, if we're going to have that stuff in our groups, our groups are never going to be effective and never going to be successful. And we're never going to go anywhere. So that kind of stuff um, uh, I do think is prevalent, and I think it needs to be um, worked on. Do you see shortcomings within the anarchist community? Or? Well, sure, and I think within the church and state, there are some people, individuals, who are very good. They just happen to be in that position and uh, within the anarchist community and movement you have some seriously defective uh, individuals. But I think the model that appeals to me at least is what uh, Alcoholics Anonymous uses that if somebody's gumming up a meeting then they're invited to go form another meeting of their own and the people who like that style of life uh, can can be part of that. So you, you still have the underlying unity and you have the message discipline over against church and state, but when you're working in close quarters with people, if you're trying to have a study group and you've got somebody who's just not going to do the preparation, uh, it, yeah, that, that person is now Maybe you have another anarchist group, they don't have a study group. Maybe they don't have a drinking group, maybe whatever. Uh, so th there's room enough uh, for everyone, and I think it's much better to keep it small. But if you get a, try to build a mass movement, you know, right, anybody can issue orders to the anarchists of the world to show up somewhere or do something. The question is, are they going to follow those orders? And if you're so charismatic that you can inspire masses the way King and Gandhi did, uh, you know, more power to you. It gets the job done. But uh, that's probably one of the hardest ways to, uh, to be an anarchist. I would just stick with your, your friends and the people that you have a legitimate uh, access to. Through, If you're in the media, if you're a writer, if you're a teacher, uh, if you're a club leader, a church leader, uh, whatever it is. Uh, so is there an anarchist leadership that you see at all like developing or how how does leadership work with anarchism? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's an important part. I think there's um, sometimes a myth that goes around that, that uh, anarchists is against leadership, against people um, you know, developing that in themselves. And I guess the way I look at it, it's about developing leadership in all of us. So it's not that we're going to sit around in a room and no one's going to be a facilitator, no one's going to take charge. But you know, for certain instances, that, that's definitely necessary. At the same time, any role like that should be spread around the group. Everyone should develop that skill. That's an important skill. And then we could develop more leaders and you know, develop more, um, just more effective groups. So I, I think it's more about developing leadership within everybody rather than saying, oh, no one, no one can be a leader or something like that. 
There was a proposal, I forget the anarchist author, who was talking about in society, I think maybe in his utopia version, people would take all these different roles of work and be skilled in a myriad of things so you don't just get stuck in this one type of thing. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? And is that maybe a principle that would have value or importance? I'm not sure what book you're talking about, but I do think that that's very important. And I think that's, I think one of the ways that um, anarchists need to be uh, mindful is a voice of authority that develops, not necessarily, I'm the president, I'm going to tell you how to do, do everything. But maybe if I'm the only one who facilitates, then I'm really taking a lot more power in that meaning than maybe I should have. Maybe power is not getting shared. Even smaller things, if I'm the only one who writes notes, then I have the voice of how our meetings, you know, I get to say what happened in our meeting. And I think by, by sharing those things, it, it's, it's uh, taking away sort of uh, power from one individual and giving it to the group. Do you have any examples in um, the world of like large societies that lived in an anarchist way? or in like anarchist society, because they wouldn't have a government, so we wouldn't really know, but like large masses of people that had... Well, the saying is that anarchism is the one theory of government that's never really been tried. The others have all been tried and failed. Uh, there's the sort of myth of the natural uh, state, but uh, in many cases those pre-governmental uh, societies were also a warfare uh, state, so they're not, they're not the best so then how would uh, it look if it was to be tried? I mean, that's the thing. If it could, had to be decentralized. So well, it I, I think you have to concentrate on the, uh, the successes. I, I'm very proud of the anarchist action of Rochester that existed for, I think it was 10 or maybe more years. And as far as leaders go, uh, we have to mention Peter Stone. He's a professor of political science at Stanford now. But uh, during his Rochester years, he was a brilliant uh, leader, and I say that mainly because although he was openly the head of the anarchist action, uh, he was also chosen to lead a uh, rather conservative uh, think tank uh, type uh, yeah. operation just because of his intellectual uh, brilliance, his background, his command of the uh, subject. And then once he left for California, the, um, the rest of us in anarchist action of Rochester just were not, we fell to bickering among ourselves uh, and um, I think some of them are meeting still but they're not inviting me. <laughs> um, well that's unfortunate. Uh, this has been, there's a lot of information here and I would like to be able to talk about more but just to summarize for people how they could maybe get involved quickly if people want to learn more about it or start acting on more anarchist principles or feelings that they have, how can people do that? Real quick. I think the best way is just get involved in groups that are anarchist based. Mm -hmm. um, Rochester.indymedia.org, our website, has a list of a, a ton of them. Um, get involved, see how it runs, see, see what it's like, and, mm -hmm. and uh, just go from there. I would say writers and books, just to name one. Uh, the uh, director of adult education there is an anarchist. Uh, and I think if you flip through the catalog and hang out, at Writers and Books, you will be able to connect with most of the rest of the local anarchist Wonderful. community. Thank you, guys. Uh, Rochester Indie Media is Indie TV, and stay tuned for next time. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>